Welcome to The Corner, La Source's digital show dedicated to the sport and entertainment industry. Every two weeks, we invite a professional to share their experience, background, and challenges. The sport industry moves fast, and having their insights is the best way to keep up to speed. Welcome to The Corner. Hello and welcome to the single highlight of our Le Corner International podcast. Today, we head back to our discussion with Cal Bunch at the time where he was VP and Managing Director of the RGA Global Sports Venture Studio. And now that I've moved on to his own entrepreneur journey. Recorded during the, the pandemic, we discussed how the sports industry needed to adapt and, and transform its current model to meet the new challenges that actually this new pandemic raised. It was an interesting dis- discussion to, to really understand sports future trends and the challenges that still need to be overcome. We hope you will enjoy this short extract and see you soon on the corner. What is for you, I mean, like you said, now you have years of experience, you've run different uh, pilots work. I mean, you've, you've worked around innovation for many years. You've seen the pros and cons from different organizations. What are the main pain points? I mean, you do also consultancy, but when, imagine you have a new client coming in. What, what is for you the main pain points or what is the common traits that you see and that you would like to tell us one organization might please avoid to do or what are the, the main challenges that you see from, from your side? You know, it's, it, as you could imagine, I think it varies between leagues, teams, some of these different partners, but mm. I think the, the most common thread is as all these things move really quickly, who are going to be the stakeholders who can drive things forward and, and do they have the right backgrounds? You know, there's some, we have worked with some incredibly talented people, but as the demands around data get more sophisticated. It's like, well, now you, you kind of need like those data science backgrounds. And we, you know, you may have a little bit of that on the performance science side, but, but how do we get those people from a marketing standpoint? So I, you know, like so much of business, I think we're going through that. I hate to say changing of the guard because I'm old enough that I really don't want to get changed out too soon. But I, you know, I do think that's part of it is just what's the evolving team in terms of personnel that, that makes you successful uh, so, so I think it's that, I think it's, you know, just move again, moving kind of at the speed of business and sport today. And so how do you, you know, find things that this is great, but like the next window where we're set up to pilot it is 2022. How do we, how do we move fast enough? And sports in some ways moves really quickly. And in other ways, I think as we said before, has these legacy deals that really encourage them not to move too quickly. Um, that's, that's been, that's been a lot of it. And, and I think that even just the last couple of years, you really see a lot of that change over. You see the organizations making that kind of change and, and how do we now get more people in place and, and how do we think about entirely new ventures to be spent? And that, especially now I think is real estate. How do we build these experiences around a a stadium? How do we, I've talked to some, some, teams and, and leagues that are, hey, let's go build our own consulting practice. We're really good at hospitality or mm-hmm. getting fan, you know, optimizing the revenue of getting fans into seats. How do we maybe take those learnings and bring them elsewhere? You, you really in sport, I mean, you guys see it more in European soccer than anywhere. So especially, I guess, Premier League soccer. The, the money coming in now is different. You know, Steve Cohen buys the Mets. I mean, this is a billionaire many times over in terms of, you know, his investment prowess. Same goes for for uh, David Tepper and the, uh, the Panthers and certainly over there where you've got international money coming from every different direction. And so in that, I think, again, that personnel extends all the way up to the owner as that's changing the ways you could think about investment Chart start to dimensionalize a lot. Do you see the, this kind of new growth? Because we, you you mentioned data, that's one thing. You you mentioned maybe the hospitality, but more generally the kind of live events, so digital, like between physical and digital, where you have new properties acquiring different properties to actually create these kind of new experiences. But you also have health and nutrition. So. 
how do you how have you seen that evolved over time in terms of okay we we no longer I mean sports used to be very traditional now it's transforming itself into a media company but now it's even more than this it's because we have high reputation how how do you see that where do you see the the big growth opportunities you know i think i'm glad you said it framed it the way you did i think you know we've gone from a phase one was really introducing and, and finding the on-ramp for innovation to come into sport more to bring, you know, as so many things, LeBron and his mm-hmm. team, you, you hear the story. Oh, Hey, he made a bunch of money just being paid in stock from beats and, and, and instead of just taking an all cash deal. And, and so, you know, as you've had more of that coming in, which, you know, I think it's, it's understanding there are a lot of different strategic investment partners who can really help accelerate the timeline of a business which now I think is getting more interesting because we are seeing innovations that, that have implications well past just sport. I'm of the mindset that, you know, those who can invest in things, the performance technologies today are, you know, we're about to take a, you know, an industry that at least in the U S I think is about 20% of GDP in healthcare and, shake the snow globe and, and reinvent it. And if you're sports, if you're going, this has helped extend careers, this is, you know, these are, these are why, you know, you start to scale things that start with the LeBrons of the world and, and bring them down and, and, you know, they're, they're proven. And, and so I think in health, I think in, you know, virtual fitness, um, you know, some, some early, there were some early things that led to a, a Peloton who's a, whatever it is, $35 billion company. So I think that's the next phase is there's going to, the people who can invest can invest in things that will be much more transformative than just purely sport. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think completely share the view. And to, to go back to another point that we touched upon, and you mentioned the pandemic. For you, I mean, what one threat I think for any industry, and this can be sports or any type of industry, is relying too much on the past successes to make sure you, you remain within the status quo that you mentioned. And this is the biggest risk and maybe the biggest failure of one industry is not to rethink its future just to be successful and just keep what has been doing its success in the past. So for you, how, how have you seen the pandemic? How have you seen the reaction of the different members of the Global Sports Venture Studio? But where, where do you see the industry heading? Because at the end, also RGA is, as you said, you, you're very much into consultancy, but also advertisements and into the digital space. And you see this shift in terms of maybe advertisement, in the news has been declining for the last 20, 15 years on linear TV, it's, it's dropping now, while you see it on social media and everywhere else going up. So how do you see that like all shifting around for new value creation? And what, what, what's the take on the pandemic? And if, I mean, you don't have a, a I'm not asking you to, to read within a bubble and, and to imagine the future, but what, what's your take on it? So, you know, I think we've all experienced this year, the hard, it's been hard for so many people and, and obviously a lot harder for a lot of other people outside of sport. So, you know, taking it, keeping it all within perspective, but, uh, you know, there's been similar to a lot of business and a lot of just society. There's this first wave of like, we just got to take care of this. We've got to keep people safe. We've got to, you know, shore up the business where we can, um, you know, make the best of a tough year as we got further into the this sort of fourth quarter, you, you're right, right back where we were in, in April, May at that time, it was, how do we play what's left of our season? Now it's how we in a lot of cases play an entire season and, and know that economically we need to play as much of those seasons as possible. So I think that lingering uncertainty has been, has been challenging. I think the big thing, um, you know, we work, our, one of RGA's largest or our largest client is Verizon. Uh, you know, here in the States, we do a ton of work with them. Huge sports sponsor, right? One of the larger companies in terms of ad spend in sport, top three, top five. The shift there that you clearly see as a technology company spending a lot in sport is we don't want to sponsor the halftime show. I mean, we're happy to have that added exposure, but Verizon's not suffering from we're looking for awareness more. problems here. What they want is we want to deploy our technologies. We want to enable the future. We want to be part of that future of sport through 5G. And we're happy to bring 
capital in in the form of investment and and real technology investment. But you know that's the way we want to activate and want those relationships to work. Which to me is is what's really exciting going into twenty twenty one is those organizations recognize and are probably better positioned. You know, Verizon. I don't want to say you know pandemic proof by any means, but at the same time. None of us stopped using our phones over this. That's, mm-hmm. that's one thing that's for certain. And so I think to me, the unlock that gets sports to the next level next year, it'll, it'll be a mix of new investment capital, SPACs, all these different ways that, that big money can come in and, and help and you know, take some ownership stakes at a time when you know, you've got assets that are poised to appreciate over the next couple of years as they, they recover. And at the same time, how do you bring those corporate partners in and, and think about it in a different way? How, and this is, you know, goes back to what I said before around having the right people that can set the right innovation agenda and can go to those big sponsors and say, this is what we're building and this is how we're getting there. We want you to be a part in the same way. We want you to be a partner in that, not just a sponsor of that. We don't, you, you know, all that. You've reached the end of this segment. I hope you've learned something new. If you want to learn more about Last Source and our activities, visit our website, www.lastsource.io, or subscribe to our newsletter to receive the best sports tech news in your mailbox every month. And if you are still not entertained, listen to all of our Look Corner episodes to get the best insight into the sports industry. See you soon on Look Corner. Le Corner.